Hey, I'm Matt Wyatt. Thanks for stopping by the channel where I use my experience as a player and broadcaster to give you a perspective on the game and show you some football stuff that might help you enjoy watching the game more. Georgia beat Cincinnati in the Peach Bowl and they did it with all passing yards. They throw for over 400 and they didn't even have 50 rushing yards in the ball game. 11 pass plays that were explosive plays of 15 yards or more, 11 of those for Georgia. We're gonna take a look here at the three biggest explosive plays in the pass game for Georgia, a 51, a 55, and a 42. Let's take a look. All right, the first explosive play we're gonna look at, the 51 yarder to Pickens. Uh, you see him here, he's into the boundary. Let's watch the play first. They get corner blitz, show a little toss, but pick up the five man rush and then hit it deep against the uh, safety. And it's a phenomenal catch. I, I wouldn't call it necessarily overthrown because you did complete it, but you know, if it's on him where he catches it running, he scores right here. So let's go back and I'll show you what's happening. First of all, look at the formation of Georgia. It's three by one. Okay, and the one into the boundary. And what that means is ball's on the left hash, so the boundary is closest to the left, right? So he's into the boundary. The three receivers, though, to the wide side involves a tight end, an H-back, or two tight ends. So look at how Cincinnati's going to defend this. Four down linemen, three true linebackers. It's a true 4-3 defense. And they've shaded all of this to the strength right here where the tight ends are, including the secondary. All right, so... What you're getting is what looks like man-to-man -man here on a play-action throw. He's probably already thinking that's man-to-man. -man, but then they double down and corner blitz, and that's what gets him open. So when we watch on the snap of the ball, this is slide protection. Only one tight end out. The other is staying in. So on the front, it's five linemen and a tight end. That's six, and they're only bringing five, four down linemen, and the corner blitz. You have plenty to protect his backside, and that's why the tackle is able to step out here and pick up the corner blitz. So there's really no, even no pressure. But with the corner blitzing, the safety is now coming over with the responsibility in this zone coverage of playing this deep third. This will be the receiver that he must pick up. The other deep defenders are here in the middle, the other safety, and here uh, on the corner. So it's three deep to compensate for corner blitz He's got to come over. A lot of teams will see this and they'll hitch off of it and throw an easy route. But Georgia is going to go th try to throw the home run. So corner blitzing, here he comes, safety coming over. It's picked up. I think initially he sees the safety rotating back to the middle of the field and knows I've got one-on-one -on -one back there on the backside, and plus he's just running right by him. And he lets it go, and that's it. So you can see safety was flat. Now he's playing catch-up. You are not going to play catch-up with Pickens. And again, you know, you hit him running right here, he's going to catch it and score. A lot of air. It has to make a great play on the football and does. thought it was interesting. <clears throat> if you look, our man's without his shoe. Ran out of one shoe. Maybe that hurt his chances right there. I don't know. And then does he catch it? So possession there, arms underneath. Pretty close. May have trapped it, but they gave him the catch. 51-yarder, the second longest play of the day for Georgia. All right, we come back. Here's the 55-yard play, the longest play from scrimmage on the day for uh, Georgia. Again, into the boundary, going to run right by him here uh, on the numbers, free release, pick up their rush, throw it up to him. This one underthrown a little bit. So it's a huge completion, but again, you know, if you're trying to be perfect, which these players and coaches are, they'll say, hey, put it out. He catches that running. He scores. Uh, we'll show you what's happening again. Look at the formation of Georgia. So you really only have two receivers on the field, and they are splitting the formation there, right and left. But I say two. I, I've got that wrong. There is a third receiver off the screen. So it's actually two by one um, with a tight end, and he's staying in in protection. So because of this, you're going to get a little bit of play action. We'll look at that. But because of this, the back and the tight end staying in a protection, it means you've got seven-man protection back here. And if they bring everybody in their front, three linemen, three linebackers, because they are in nickel, that is uh, only six here on this side, and that's what's going to happen. Let's look at the secondary. On the snap of the ball, what's happening? You are getting a six-man rush because they're seeing – tight end, and a little bit of play action look. But that little bit of a fake to the running back pulls the safety up. 
I'm not sure that it should, but it does. It pulls those two safeties up. When that happens, for whatever reason, you got a hard corner here in the boundary, even though there's nobody over the top, a little unusual, but he's still not able to hold this receiver up and he gets a free release to the inside. So that's a big part of it, first of all. A little bit of play fake. Safeties are up instead of back. And you got a free release here. Now there's nothing to stop him from getting off and uh, beating the top of this defense. Quarterback reads it, sees it the whole way, which is what you have to do. Six-man rush picked up. And then we talk about the throw. You know, if this is, again, put out where he can run, sprint, and catch this ball, probably going to catch it, run away for a TD. It's underthrown. You do get the completion, 55-yarder. Uh, but it, it's kind of one of those that could have, should have, would have. Again, you know, he's supposed to have bump to hold him up. He doesn't get held up. He's free release the whole way. Watch him get underthrown. You see him have to shuttle it down right there. See what I'm saying? And that means pretty obvious. If this is thrown out where he's running full speed and this ball is thrown out here, uh, you know, he's going to catch it and maybe have a chance to stay up and go score. Instead, he's got to kind of shut it down, wait on it. And that's what, even though you get the completion, that's what allows you to get tackled right there instead of scoring. All right, and the last one we'll take a look at was the third longest play of the day, a 42-yarder. But this one was a really short throw. It's a screen pass. It goes for big yards. So how does it happen? Tight end in motion. They bring a linebacker to that side. You get lineman out in front. Yards after the catch. The corner is really the only one over there, and Pickens blows him up. Didn't knock him off his feet, but uh, he definitely had a good block in there. This is what I see. Again, um, Sometimes you guess right, play calling, the timing of it, you catch them in a certain call is a big part of it. So uh, how does this start? You've got uh, two receivers, twins, to the wide side of the field here, including the hash receiver that catches the the deal, the, the screen, and two tight ends into the boundary, one on the line, one in the H-back with a single back. So by formation, because of this, two tight ends and a back, you look at all this is like like a like a run look for Georgia, right? So look at the defense. They go three down, four linebackers. It may be three three nickel, but regardless, this is seven defenders all ready to play football here at the line of scrimmage. And so already, just on alignment, you're sort of one on one out here on these guys with a safety way back here in the middle of the field. Look what happens though. We motion the H back. <clears throat> When they motion the H back over here, that puts a third receiver and, you know, AKA blocker on this side of the field. As a part of their call, they are bringing that outside linebacker to this side. He's not in man to man. They're going to bring him. And so it puts Georgia in a position now where even if they didn't have linemen out in front, they still have enough blockers to take care of uh, having the ball carrier, you know, not have someone accounting for him. Okay, so just by motioning him across, we got a little bit of numbers game going on. Then Cincinnati plays into it. They bring six with the seventh engaged in here as well. So seven defenders that are occupied right here. We've already got two blockers, one for the corner, one for the up back, out in front of a ball carrier that's free and unaccounted for. Plus, we're turning some of these guys loose on the screen and getting the linemen out in front. It's a big-time numbers advantage for Georgia. Here's what I'm talking about. At the time he catches the football on this screen, tight end's about to account for him. Corner is about to be accounted for by the outside receiver. So you've got two defenders, and that's it on this side of the field. Two blockers, plus here comes one, uh, excuse me, here comes one, two, and three more. Huge numbers advantage on this screen, and that's why it goes for big yards. That's uh, basically the safety has no shot, you know, right here. The corner, I think, is doing what he's supposed to do, is thinking, I'm the last line of defense. I have to be careful here and try to somehow stay in the play. The safety's coming up, huge disadvantage trying to take on an offensive lineman, and now it's just free run to daylight for uh, the ball carrier. A little bit of a block there. They're just playing catch. They don't really force the issue. They're kind of giving him the big play because they feel the numbers. Right here, he gets his feet tangled up with 73 and and trips him up, and he takes a tumble. <laughs> but the ball carrier stays up, and this is a heck of a deal right here. Now, he didn't pancake him. Pickens didn't and knock him 
down, but I mean, it's a blow. He, he pops him. So watch him here. Boom, knock him back. You know, so this is really clearing this path to the sideline to see if you can outrun everybody. And, you know, Cincinnati's lucky they got a kid that can run, that can keep this from being a touchdown. They gave you one more look on it. Again, you can kind of see what's happening in the advantages. Uh, from this view, you can see you've got three Cincinnati defenders and already four blockers for Georgia, but a big old numbers advantage as I've showed you. Watch out, 73. Sniper got him. <laughs> Big play. All right, that's how it happened. 11 pass plays of 15 yards or more in the game for Georgia. 400 yards passing or more, less than 50 yards rushing, and a close win over a good Cincinnati team. And those were the three biggest pass plays of the day. If you like that, do me a favor. Would you hit that like button? That really helps me out a whole lot, more than you realize maybe. And uh, also your ideas. I really appreciate those. There's been a lot of feedback in the comments on these videos here the last few days. Great suggestions that I'm already written down and getting ready to work on. So if you have a video you'd like me to do or a play or a game that you'd like me to take a look at, I am open to it. So please hit me up in the comments and let me know. Also say hello to me on social media. I'm Radio Wyatt, pretty much wherever you look, and I will see you on the next one.